What's up guys and welcome back, it is episode number 9 of the EAFC career mode uh, returning today. What a streak for Luton Town, yep, rising up the table and now currently sitting 6 points above the drop zone, 34 points on the board, 10 games to go. I would say realistically from this point here, one win and a couple of draws and that would be enough in our final 10 to survive, but it's certainly not over yet. Uh, loads to get through in today's episode guys with 10 games to go in the season, uh, starting off though with this... Barkley seems below par. Oh, training plan. Okay, I was going to say. What games are you watching, assistant manager? Uh, Lekonga is out for four weeks. Big blow there as he'll miss the rest of March and a bit of April as well. Got an injury in the Forest game and a bid for Alfie. Our left back who said he wanted to go. Porto putting a bid in. And to be fair, we have seen quite a few English players leave to the Portuguese Primeira Liga recently. Marcus Edwards balling out of Vittorio Guimarães. Uh, Gomez leaving. Manchester United as a youngster as well. In fact... Uh, Porto have Danny Loder, uh, young English striker. So I'm going to negotiate that bid there and let him go. Yep. Uh, if Porto want to match five and a half million pounds, I would accept it. Alfie has already said he wants to leave the club. He's been back up to Ryan Giles this season. Porto not too keen on parting ways with more money, but I think I should be able to squeeze at least a couple extra 100k out of them. And there we go, 5.25k, and now it's up to Alfie. He wants to leave to Portugal, that's his decision. And there we go, Alfie is going to leave come the summer window opening to Porto, 5.25 mil. I'll be honest, I didn't really want to sell him, even if I get an A as an excellent deal there, because he's a pretty solid backup for Ryan Giles at 77 rated and... I'm not sure Ryan will stay in the summer, but we'll take it. We'll take it. And there you go. Right, five games to squeeze in today, guys. Five with the final ten, or at least five, possibly even more. We're starting off with Liverpool. Last time we faced them, they dumped us out of the cup on penalties. Let's see if we can get revenge here. And one of, I would say, the two wins we need to automatically secure survival. It's certainly not over yet with... Oh, not Pelly, not Pelly. With... Uh, with 10 games to go. We're only six points off the drop and we've got a really bad goal difference record as well. And we have five big games coming now. The only real winnable game, I would say, is the Bournemouth one. And now if panzi has gone down as well, and if he's going to be out for at least a few weeks, we're, we're going to be in a bit of trouble here with a lack of depth for CM as well. I think Joel Cox is probably licking his lips though right now, thinking it's my time. Put me in the first team, Gaffer. Endo. They give us space. Salah to Jota with the 1-2. It's the Egyptian. And Endo drills home. Liverpool in front. Oh, Pansy's just gone down again. He's in the wars. There is no way he's going to run that injury off. Absolutely no way. I might as well keep him on it though. Quick tip for you guys. If you are playing games in succession with a game or two in midweek, if you get a player that gets a knock, don't take him off. Don't take him off. Keep him on because you won't be able to play him in that midweek game because the shortest injury you can get in career mode is five days. So they're guaranteed to miss that following game in the week. So you might as well keep them out there, burn their energy, run it into the ground and instead rest your other starters who can then play in the week. Diaz in behind the skipper. Jota, great save, Kaminsky. You know, I read a comment in the last episode from someone saying that I've been trashing Kaminsky all season, but recently he's picked it up. Hey, listen, bro, me too. <laughs> like, seriously, it's been the same with me. All year long, I'd be like, oh, my keeper's just so bad. He's so trash. Recently, he's been really, really big for me. Massive save there. Keeps me breathing. Liverpool done a great job of keeping possession. You just know late on in the game, legs getting tired and the class that the Reds possess and the pace and the agility as well. It's going to be a chance for them to fire in the dagger, which they've done. Jota beats Kaminsky at the near post. Game, set, match. Liverpool to three points. Oh, careful, 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 careful. Don't let it become free. Oh. Capitulated right at the end. And because of how tight it is as well, it may well come out of the goal difference. Now it's already shocking. It just makes it worse. We weren't really supposed to get anything from the game anyway. So, boys, head up. Head up. Put it straight to the back of your minds. Big game coming in three days' time. Get yourself back on the coach down. And we'll, uh, we'll check on that Pelly Ryder Companzo injury as well. Because I'm worried about that. And as we check the injury, it is a... Oh, no! Three months. Man, he's been so good for me this year doing the dirty work. But Pelly out for the season with a broken toe. And now we're in a bit of trouble as well because we've got very little depth for CM. That's a 
That's a massive injury of Lakonga already sidelined as well. So we've already got two youth players that are unsettled, to be fair. Rodri Howes and Ewan Hardy. So if we take a look at the academy right now, uh, Howes is a 60-rated left winger. He's got a lot of pace, but I yeah, might as well just throw him in the first team anyway because the potential is all right. And Hardy's potential is pretty decent, but the overall is low. I might, do you know, I might just let him walk because we've got better options. We've got better options. I might just let him walk. Nah, 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 nah. Put him, in, put him in the first team and try and load him out in the summer. And also, guys, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Thank you so much for consistently telling me. Put development plans on your youth players. Dogs, what are you doing, Gaffer? Um, I keep forgetting. <laughs> But thank you for the comments, man. I promise I'm, I'm going to do it right now, okay? I'm going to do it right now. Thank you for continuing to remind me. I've got a memory of a goldfish, man. There we go, guys. Much better. Much better. So, yeah, do we promote Joel then? I mean, we've got a lack of depth right now at CM. Our injuries too. It does make sense. But it also Gabriel Long. And also, I have seen some comments from you guys saying you, you've got to push Long further forward, man. He'd be great on the wing with the, the crossing and the curve. And also the pace he's got as well. The problem is you don't play with wingers. Um, but I guess we could possibly play him as maybe an attacking midfielder. Pacey, tricky, bursting through the lines. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to put him further forward. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote Joel. I'm going to have to do it, man. We've got a lack of depth right now, especially in the CM area. I'm putting him in the first team. Sorry, moment of truth. Can't check Hardy's potential yet. But for the big dog, Joel Cox... Potential to be special, as we were expecting. Joel Cox through the Luton Academy. And, you know, I saw a comment saying, he's the new Joe Cole. It's such a great shout at this, because Joe Cole, not known for his height, neither is Joel at 5'5". Five five. The same initials, tricky, flair, pacey sort of player. They can play on the wing and through the middle as well. i, I got to say, stylish lad. Came through the West Ham Academy, but then was released, unlike Joe Cole at 16. He's been picked up by Luton, and now in our team. Can't check Hardy's potential, but Rodri, to be fair, the young Welsh winger, he does show great potential as well. So, handy little squad winger to have, but no doubt about it, Barclays protege, Joel Cox, the new Joe Cole. Definitely, definitely, definitely got to throw this guy in. Moving on, Spurs in North London following game. And I am going to give Joel his debut as Barkley and Sean will need to drop slightly deeper to facilitate our wonder kid. Not expecting much from this, but no wins or goals in our last two. Hopefully, a point here will do me very nicely. There we go. First pass underway. Well done, young man. Exactly what you want from a, uh, a youngster getting his first senior start. You know, I talk about this a lot, but like when, when you're away from home and you've got a weaker team, one of the best things you want to do to start off with is just knock a few passes together. Just string a few together consistently. It just gives you a little bit more confidence, you know. It helps you settle in a little bit, takes the crowd out of the game, takes the sting, the buy out of the game as well. And it builds a little bit of confidence in your players as well. So, yeah, good start here to be fair as we... Get ourselves forward. Chong, brilliant ball. Sergeant's on the end of it and just couldn't get away. Decent start though. Skip up. Back to Burke. And out wide is Ryan. And Giles linked to some bigger clubs in the summer. Will it be a one and done year for him? At Kenilworth Road? We certainly hope not. Otherwise we are going to be in trouble for next season. Because I, I, I know this year Barkley's been my player of the year. But this guy, he's just so good. I mean, I must say, he's been brilliant for me this year. I don't know what the infringement's for. Offside, maybe, but... Oh! Head up, young man. Head up. In the right area, just not the end product we wanted. Straight at Hugo Lloris. He's asserted himself early, though. You like to see it. Careful. Careful. Don't... Oh, great first touch by Brennan Johnson. Don't allow a chance. We've done so well at keeping Spurs out until we don't. Hoisberg with a finish, Spurs in front, the Danish heads them into a one-goal lead. So frustrating. And I knew in this run of fixtures we were unlikely to get anything, but I do think we could find a leveller in this second half. I know no goals in two, but we've actually had a good game out there. We played quite well, only conceded through the one attempt on our goal. So if we get a chance, this time we need to make sure we take it. Cox, he's got space to have a dig here. He's taken a deflection, he's hit the bar, and it's cleared. By Romero. 
Worth we're, we're a go. I think it took a nick there. But even so, we've been really unlucky to be trading this game. Spurs looking for that goal to wrap this up. Good shielding by the skipper. And quickly we work the ball forward here. Still down by a goal. Joel's had a really solid debut out there. He's not really put a foot wrong here. As we're still trailing. But looking for that leveler. Nice football. Brilliant football. Ryan Giles, can you finish? No. It's not the man I wanted. Only one goal all season long. Couldn't even test Lloris. It's a chance for one late opportunity. Definitely not now. Giving it away. And Spurs can wrap this for Charleston. So cruel. But that's the nature of the Premier League. Played well. Didn't take our chances. Punished by the former Evertonian Hornet. Game over. Back to back losses. Oh boy, he's flat out as well. Didn't deserve that, man. Played really well. Solid debut from Joel. Hit the crossbar, albeit with a deflection as well. Had a golden chance early. Just couldn't take the opportunities. Story of the season. And I've got to say now, it's getting a bit worrying once again. Oh, and Fulham beat the Blades as well. It's only natural to keep checking the table at this stage of the season. So back down into 13th now. And the gap is just three. Plus we've got the worst goal difference of all the teams that still have a realistic shot of survival right now. Because of how tight it is, you, you can't even rule out Bournemouth in 10th. Although I think they'll be all right from here. But really, from Brentford down to Wolves, it's anyone's guess as to who's going to set that final spot. I think well, Burnley are down. I think Forest are probably going down as well, especially with the goal difference too. But really, from 11th to 18th, it's still anyone's guess as to who's going down. And a few teams also have a game in hand as well. And look at the fixtures we've got coming, man. Honestly, Arsenal away next on Tuesday. After Bournemouth at home, which is one of the very few winnable fixtures we've got remaining. Man City away. Brentford at home. Wolves away. Everton, West Ham and Fulham. Once we get out of these Arsenal and Man City games here, I think we could definitely win at least one of those final five. But the question is, if we don't beat Bournemouth at home, then we're going to be in trouble heading into the final five games. Right, uh, anyway, April's here. <laughs> I'm starting to get really nervous now. Uh, three more scouting updates, including the final one as well uh, from England and Wales. For Scotland then, let's see what we've got. Just giving an academy deal to Jack Love. Accidentally skipped past that real quick. Uh, but yeah, so far, um, it's not... Oh, okay. He could be all right. We'll put him in the academy. My goodness, that has got to be one of the lowest overalls I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, goodness gracious. Not great. Not great. Scotland has, of course, wielded us Rory. And I put a couple more in the academy from this one here. But, uh, yeah. As for Wales, this is our final month. So I'm going to put Reese in the academy. Uh, Michael, don't think he's going to make it that poor mark evaluation. Uh, same with Ryan Reese. I'm being very selective here because I think we can afford to be with some top class scouts. And as for our final month of England as well, nope, nope, nope. Ooh, maybe I'll consider it. Uh, no, James Bryan. I think I'll give him a deal. Young goalkeeper. Uh, but I think that is probably going to do it. Yeah, I'm being I'm being very selective. I think I can afford to be, to be honest. I will give Ruben a deal, but otherwise. Otherwise, I think I think I'm okay just to, to skip and, 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 and reject most of these players here with the quality of scouts we've got. So right now, our academy is looking like this. I'll make sure to put these guys on development plans as well. Don't worry, guys. I've learned my lesson. I'll put them on a... Uh, oh, he's actually got quite good potential. I'll put them on uh, development plans straight away. But just before I do that, guys, uh, in the comments section down below... Because we've now got two of our scouts finishing their missions, what I want you to do is leave a comment and tell me where should we send our scouts for next season. David has one month remaining on his scouting, but where should we send our scouts for next season? Let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll set this up as soon as the new season begins. So I'm going to keep one scout local in England once again, but comment today, guys. Comment down below. Where should we send our other two youth scouts to? Let me know in the comments. Give me a reason as to why we should scout our nation as well. I feel like we're starting to gain a bit more marketability now with this one season in the Premier League, and well, fingers crossed, touch wood, another one to come as well. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Where should we scout 
And where should we send our other two youth scouts to? One will stay in England, but in the comments, where should we send the other two? Following game, Arsenal away, and due to fitness and injury problems, I've got four teenage academy graduates out there tonight as Luton Town are definitely in trouble. Bournemouth on the weekend, a far more winnable fixture, so tonight, anything's a bonus. Just don't want to see any more injuries. We can't afford any more. Kaio Saka gets away from Amari Bell, down this right-hand side, and England International on the turn. Beats the left back, rolls it inside. Great save by the kid would. And the Arsenal Academy graduate Ballard just hoofs it into touch. Ethan getting a nod tonight ahead of Kaminsky. And he's just made a brilliant save to keep it at 0 0. Saka rolls it inside. Great block by Cashin. And oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant to do. No, no, no. <sighs> this circle button is for a clearance, not to lunge thin air. Come on. Look at this man. Clearly, I want a clearance. And instead, my man just hand tackles nobody. And it's worked into Jesus, who scored the only goal of the game in the reverse fixture. That is so... I'm clearly... I'm trying to clear the ball. It's not in Arsenal's possessions. Who am I trying to stand tackle? Come on here. You know what I'm trying to do there. Saka coming inside. Rolling it across. Fabio Vieira. Smith Rowe. Two. Once the first goal goes in, especially before the break, it's a sucker punch. Heads drop, momentum lost, and the game at that point feels almost out of our control. 2-0 now, and uh, this game is done. This game is done, and it's going to be three straight losses for Luton as well. Starting to really panic right now. Beno to Hardy. With a nice ball through, to be fair. Great footwork out of Bio. Oh, cracking finish. And... Well, it's not over yet. We're back in it. Oh, come on. Don't want to get back on, back in the game. Don't throw it away straight away. Saka. Oh, it's just brilliant, man. It's just brilliant. Despite that goal, we're, there's still a golfing class tonight. Game definitely over now. Declan Rice. Oh, it's just so quick. Good save, Keith, but it's just so quick. That's, that's the level right now that the Gunners are on that we are not. The incisive, quick passing and movement. We just have not had an answer for it tonight. If they get a fourth goal in stoppage time, it's no less than they deserve. Golfing class tonight between the two teams. It's four. Glad to get a goal, but no wins in four. One point taken for a possible 12. Am I glad to know that the following game is a much more winnable one? Born for home next. We weren't expecting to get anything from the games anyway, so just move straight on. Oh, for goodness sake. And now Fulham and Wolves have both won as well. So that means the table sees us drop to 16th. Sheffield United have got two games in hand. Man, oh man, it is so tight. There is just one point separating Everton in 12th to Sheffield United in 18th. And only two separating 11th to 18th. This has got to be one of the most chaotic relegation fights ever. I mean, who is your money on at this point to go down? So, following game, glad to be back home. And with Manchester City away at the Etihad directly after this one, this is what you call a must-win fixture. Bournemouth at home as we end to end the loss streak here. And whilst normally I take a point, all things considered now, I think only three will do. Need the victory here. Come on, Luton Town. Cannot afford another game without a win. You know, I did see a comment in the last episode um, saying if Luton do go down, then, you know, rebuilding the championship would be quite fun. I agree. I agree. And I'd be more than happy to stay on in the second tier. But the question is, would the ball keep me on, you know? Would the board keep me after a relegation? That's the problem. Oh. I'm trying not to think about that right now because destiny's in our own hands. Just got to get back to winning ways here. Oh, for goodness sake, Sinistera. So tricky. Look at Barkley's energy in the bottom left, man. Seriously, he's, he's absolutely gassed. He was tired pre-game, even though he got the full rest against Arsenal in the week. It's because his stamina is so low. It's only 56. And that means that, you know, game after game, when he runs himself in the ground for 90 minutes, he needs a full week to recover, you know? <laughs> Never mind playing two games in a week. He can't do that. He's absolutely gassed, mate. Yeah, when in Clark, makes shift right back today. As we'll let's, uh, work our way forward here. Barkley. Playing a brilliant ball. For Chong's first Luton Town goal. Finally, the kid is off the mark, and look what it means. 
He refused to shy away from the pressure. He took the responsibility. And he comes up big in one of the biggest games. It's a great ball through by the boss. And the kid fires in his first in a Luton Town jersey. Hat is in front. One near the Kenilworth Road. Absolutely inch perfect ball from the boss though, man. Seriously, where would it be without this guy? I'll tell you right now, in Burnley's position, rock bottom. Goodness gracious. You know, I've seen some comments from you guys saying, Barkley for captain, man. Make him skip away. Well done, Clark. And I've got to say, next season, if Tom does go or lose his place in the first 11, Ross will still be starting. And I think he'll be taking the armband on regular match days because he, he is a leader out there. And right now he's leading us away from the bottom three. Brilliant assist. Oh, no, 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 no. Bournemouth have had nothing all game long. Nothing all game long. Well done, Ballard. Sean, you've got to win that. Well done. Well done. And Bar Barkley's got no energy at all. Just push it towards the corner, mate. Couldn't even kick it that far. He's done. Barkley's got zero energy. Look at Barkley, man. But just stay out there, mate, for the influence. You're the decoy, mate. You're the decoy. It's stoppage time. Bournemouth aren't going to gain any ground. And Luton's winless run is over. Clean sheet at Kenilworth Road. Chong's first goal of the year. And a massive three points for the Hannahs to take us up to 37 points. Huge win. Oh, and the Blades just beat Chelsea. Like, this is ridiculous, man. Honestly, we're up to 12, but we're only four points above Palace in 18. I think Forrest are down now. Forrest are going to join Burnley in the Championship. So it's, it's what we've got now. Eight teams competing for that one final relegation spot that nobody wants. Four points separating 18th to Everton in 11th. Unbelievable. Following game, the treble winners away, going for yet another league title in pole position. Can't see us getting anything from this game. So would that be in the case? Barkley needs a rest and he's going to get a full rest as well out of the matchday squad. But whilst Kabore is not eligible to play against his parent club, Samuel Lekonga is back from injury. That's a big boost up. These are the sort of games where you just, you just try and hold on for as long as you can, do you know what I mean? Like against Arsenal, like against Spurs. Great ball, Joel. Joel Cox with his first goal in professional football has scored it in the Etihad. The 17 year old has stunned Manchester into silence and Luton Town lead. Gave the youngster a start tonight and, and a cash in kit I played her. I thought I went out. Oh, Jack Grealish, not happy about that. I gave him the start today. I thought, might as well throw the kid in. Why not? Keep him in the lineup. And he's just given us a shock lead. But the question is, how long can it last? Grealish down the right. Looking to step inside. This time, he does get the better of cash in. Giles is back to make the tackle. 23 minutes in. Luton still leading. I don't know what's going on there in the top right, by the way, guys. Sorry about that. I must say, I'm really liking career mode in this year's EAFC. But... The game is riddled with bugs, isn't it? Like, seriously, I don't think I've played a FIFA game or, or now an EA game from the start. This has had as many bugs as this one. Chong! Oh, he doesn't want to save! And cut back only for Kyle Walker to intercept and Manchester City will escape. Well, the game might be riddled with bugs, but right now, we're flowing with confidence. And a boy for two! Oh... Look at the reaction on the sidelines at Luton Town in this first half, going at the champions, leading by one, and could easily be tuning up. Ballard has a goal and finds it just off target. Sensational first half performance as we lead at the break at the Etihad. Grealish tackled by Amari Belt. Way and a throw one for Luton. He's had a tough game out there today, Jack Grealish. Very tough game as we're still leading by one. And this would be the shock result of the season. The Acker Breaker. As Luton still lead by one. Full value for it as well. Oh, it, 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 hold on. It still could be two. Hold on. Just recycle it. 
And out wide is Ryan asking for it. Out of bios at the far post. He's got the height. And it's a great save by Edison. I can't believe we're only leading by one. And I can't believe I've just said that. Tom to Dom. And now cash in. As Harlan chasing. So quickly, wisely offloads to Chong. As we still lead by a goal here at the Etihad. Joel to out of bio. Look at the space for Amari Bell down the right. And... And Luton Town are going to make it back-to-back -back wins with the scalp of the century. It's going to be the third scalp of the season to add to Manchester United at home and Chelsea away. As Luton pull it out of the bag against all odds. The Acker breaker will infuriate many, but not those in the away end. Because this game seems all but done. Our defence today has been so, so solid against Grealish, Haaland, Foden, KDB. They haven't had an answer for our back five, nor for the 17-year-old wonder kid. Luton are going to come to the Etihad and claim a famous win. Let's see how that clean sheet for Kaminsky, yeah. Let's see it out for the lad in the sticks. Oh, Jack Greenish has had a nightmare game out there today. Absolute nightmare. And that is that. A spanner in the works for Manchester City's quest for yet another title. But the 40-point mark has been reached in the most unlikely of ways. We come to the northwest and leave with all three points with our third scalp of the season and the win of the year. That is one for the ages. Released by the West Ham Academy for being too little, too small and too weak. Not given a chance due to the lack of physicality. Luton Town have picked him up and my short king, Joel Cox, has just delivered the win of the season. Guys, we shall leave it there. So thank you for watching the penultimate episode of season one. If you have enjoyed it, then please do like, uh, drop a like. Sorry, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return in the next episode up to the magic 40 point marker. But... Will it be enough this season due to the chaotic cluster of teams in the bottom half? Have a great day, guys. Much love, and I'll see you for the season finale very soon. Oh, man, what a win.